Hello, and welcome to another Astro One video presentation. Today we'll be demonstrating how the relative positions of the Earth, Moon, and Sun over time cause the Moon to appear to go through phases. To help me with this is my assistant, Stephen. As the Earth orbits around the Sun, the Moon also orbits around the Earth. Our view of the Moon will change depending on where it is located relative to the Earth and the Sun. To demonstrate this, I'll stand in the center of the room representing the Earth, while Stephen will move around me, representing the Moon. We'll use a bright lamp to represent the Sun. To see what people on Earth will observe, we'll film from my point of view. Lights! Let's start off with the Moon in between the Earth and the Sun. In this position, one side of the Moon is illuminated by the Sun, but we see the other side. Since we can't see any of the illuminated portion, we can't see the Moon at this position. We call this phase of the Moon a new Moon. The Moon does not remain stationary relative to the Earth and Sun, but orbits around the Earth, roughly once a month. So in about three to four days, it will be one-eighth of the way around the Earth. At this position, one half of the Moon is still illuminated by the Sun, but now a small portion of that is facing the Earth. What we see is a crescent-shaped portion of the Moon, which is why we call it a waxing crescent Moon. Roughly one week after the new moon phase, the moon has moved one quarter of the way around the Earth. One half of the moon is illuminated, but now more of the portion which is facing us is illuminated, about half of it. We call this phase the first quarter moon, since the moon is one quarter through its orbit. As time continues, the side facing us will become even more illuminated, more than half of the moon's near side lit by the sun. We call this phase the waxing gibbous moon. Roughly two weeks after the new moon phase, the moon is now on the opposite side of the Earth from the sun. The half which is illuminated is also the half which faces us. We see the entire illuminated portion in what we call the full moon phase. Over the next two weeks, as the moon continues through its orbit, it will continue to change phases, moving first through the waning gibbous phase, the last or third quarter phase, the waning crescent phase, until one month after we started, it is back to the new moon phase. Before we move on, let's rewind for a minute and take a look at this again. When labeling the first couple of lunar phases, we included the term waxing, as in waxing crescent and waxing gibbous. What do you think the term waxing means? If you watch the video, you'll see that through the first half of its orbit, the portion of the moon facing us becomes more illuminated over time. This is what we mean when we say that the moon is waxing. In that case, what do we mean when we say the moon is waning, as in waning gibbous and waning crescent? When the moon is waning, the portion facing us becomes less illuminated over time. Because the moon orbits around the Earth and changes position relative to the sun, it will not always be observed rising and setting at the same time every day. How can we determine approximately when the moon will rise and set, based on its phase? Let's start with the moon in the new moon phase. As viewed from the Earth, the new moon is in the same direction in space as the sun, and will therefore rise when the sun rises and set when the sun sets. The full moon, on the other hand, is on the opposite side of the Earth from the Sun, and so will rise when the Sun sets, and set when the Sun rises. But what about the other phases of the Moon? To demonstrate how we can determine this, Stephen will represent the Earth. Standing on the Earth, we can see half of the celestial sphere. To show which half he can see, Stephen will hold his arms out to his sides. As he turns counterclockwise, objects will appear to rise into view on his left side and set out of view on his right. So we can label the left hand as the eastern horizon and his right hand as the western horizon. Let's find out when the first quarter moon rises and sets, represented by the ball near Stephen. If Stephen begins with his back to the first quarter moon, then it is not in his view. As he rotates around, the first quarter moon will rise into view over his eastern horizon. What time of day is it? Since Stephen is facing the sun, it's noon, and so the first quarter moon rises at noon. What time does it set? As Stephen continues to rotate, 
you will see that the first quarter moon is highest in the sky, when Stephen is directly facing it, at sunset, and then sets below the western horizon at midnight. So there you have it. The relative positions of the Earth, Moon, and Sun over time not only cause the Moon to appear to go through phases, but also cause its rise and set times to vary. Join us again for another exciting astronomy concept. See you next time!